Okay. So um, tonight we're going to uh, continue on with uh, our little project here. And tonight's going to be focused mainly on Docker, which is the framework of which I'm going to be running this, this little thing. So a couple of things you had to do, I had to do to get this um, going. The first thing is we needed a way of um, making our little uh, app, a little server run in Docker. And in order to do that, you create a Docker file. This is a relatively simple one. And um, let me explain what this does. So this is our Docker file. This is saying you're using Node that runs on, on this version of, of Unix, which is kind of Linux, which is a very stripped down version. You make a directory, you change to it, and then you copy the, the package, which is what's going to build Node, into there. NPM install is what's going to make sure it has all the modules it needs to build. Then you copy all the code in there. And this line says, we're going to let everyone talk to us on, on port 5000. And then we're going to um, run the command. So what you do there, um, let me show you. Uh, let's see if it's, okay, let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see it better. Okay, so this is where I'm running stuff, but since we're in the right directory here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build, um, let me see if I have that, uh, command, um, so they ha you have to be in the directory. Um, Docker build. And it is called, um, just want to make sure I use the same name because that's going to come in. That's going to be very important. Uh, simple node. And dash t simple note. And it's pretty much built. So you can see what it does. Now, this is very important. I ran into problems because I did not um, have the right version of Docker. For your system, whatever it is, look up the specific information. I had to go through a specific process in, um, to, in order to build, um, install the Docker engine. Let me show you. Uh, here it is. It is, is that it? Okay. Okay. There's a very specific procedure for installing Docker on Ubuntu. And I didn't do it right, and consequently, it would not work. It was looking for things in the wrong place. And so the first thing here is you uninstall the older versions. And then, so that's this, this here. And um, get rid of them. Um, let's see. They're talking about the storage. So next thing you have to do is set up the Docker repository. So this allows you to update and do things easier. So you can run these commands. This is get the latest and then install what you need for that. Then there's a, a key that you need. You get that. And then this will set up the stable repository.
get what you need for that. And you can just follow along these commands. It's, you can see it's getting it from Docker, getting everything. And then you install Docker. And what should happen, and this, this is, then it will be correct and it'll work correctly as we just saw. So great, we have our little thing as an engine. And the next thing we want, of course, is to install RabbitMQ. Now, the nice thing is RabbitMQ uh, has an official version. And right in Docker, so you can just uh, set it up using the, you can look here. Now there are two, there's, what I did is, I did rabbit MQ latest. Um, and actually that's where you set it up. This is now you're getting into the Docker. YAML file, which is allows you to set up the whole network using Doc and Compose, Doc and Compose YAML. So let me bring that up. And let's see what we got here. That might, what is that? Mm, that's, let's try this. There we go. Okay, so let me make sure we have the right thing. So this is the the Docker file, the Docker, Docker Compose YAML. I put this version, it could be a lighter version. Um, then I had to set up two different things, Rabbit and Rabbit Management. Rabbit is the, the demon that runs the Rabbit MQ. Rabbit Management is the management console, so you're running it, uh, at 8080. You set the these that's what this sets up. Then I want to set up multiple nodes, so I set it up for 5000 and 5001. Now, one thought I have is right now we're just using the default network. We're not using a you can do custom network for you actually assign the IP addresses. They're internal but you you can assign them in this case we're just going to change the port and once you have this uh file here you can run uh doc compose oh different window you can just run doc and compose up and that's going to bring up the two nodes, and well, it says 5,000. We got 5,000 and 5,001. So you can see it ran, brought up Rabbit, it brought up the, um, our, the, our little node, the management node, and in fact, now we can take a look. You see, it's all set up. Now, in this case, we're not saving information here, we probably will eventually. In order to save, okay, let me make sure that you can see it running, um, which you cannot right now. Let's see if this does it. No, that's wrong one. Uh, whatever is it? There we go. So let me scroll up a little bit to show you. So I see if it's going to, depends on how many. But it basically ran Docker Compose, it's Docker dash Compose and space up. And that will get you your whole, all those things are running in containers. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So you can see it's going through all the initialization here. Now I don't know if I did it, but you can see it starts everything up here. And we want to see if we can get back to the, uh, the web. So let me show you something here. Um, 
and here's your your rabbit mq running and it's already logged in and you this is where you can do things like set up your channels set up your connections you set up your cues which is probably something we might want to do and then our app can our, our servers can read and write to those cues because remember that's how they're going to communicate um, the other thing is, this is our app running on, uh, 1501. There's also another one. Let's see. Uh, so you have both of them, and we can do, uh, escape. And... So you can see we have now four different things up and running. You can check. Let me go back and to the command line here. And I think this is it. Let's see. Yeah. So let me see here what I can... So, you can do dock and container ls, and that'll show you we got the RabbitMQ and the two simple nodes running. It shows you what ports they're running on and everything else. Uh, the, the, the image, um, the name. So, and you can even get in there. So, let's say you want to look at... Uh, you can actually enter the uh, these containers now. We have no, we we may now have a reason to, but that would be um, Docker container exec. Container exec, which means interactive, and then the name of the container. Well, we can use the number, but let's. Uh, Let's see what we got, if we can get in here. Um, and... Uh, oh, I put the wrong thing here. <laughs> wrong name. You need the name, and I put the image name. Uh, let's see... And then, and you can see you're at a batch pump. So you can do something like this. I think this will work. And that's the directory. look at a log and I believe there's a command stop it can can't let's log or log see if that works yeah so this will show you the logs of one of your containers so there's a lot you can do Docker is a huge topic. Um, uh, if you're interested in learning more, um, Udemy uh, has a lot of Brent Fisher's classes. They're very good. Uh, he's a Docker captain. And uh, if you don't uh, remember Udemy, you want to get on sale, right? Because and because they're almost always having sales. So, um, but anyway, it's, there's a lot that can be done for a lot of professional places are using it, um, because it's just a nice, easy way to run your stuff. There are some complications with it, but in general, it is something that can be very handy. Certainly a skill that looks good on the old resume. So if you can say that you know Docker and you use Docker, that 
looks really good if you're looking for an IT job. So, um, at any rate, um, hopefully this has been helpful. I know this is more a docker than a blockchain, but um, I think it'll be helpful for you in any of your exp experimentation or things you want to do where it's more than just running a little app and maybe you want to run a bunch of servers and and so on. And what we're going to see here is we're going to be able to send messages between the nodes and so on. That's that's the vision, okay? Um, so, so, again, thank you for watching, and I will speak to you next time. Take care.